country or Kezia, individual Kezia, thought that's I a think good what thing. I, what I'm trying to get at here is the consequences of that. And um, would that position bind Scottish Labour MPs? I.e., would they adopt the Scottish Party policy on the renewal of Trident or the UK Party policy? That's what I'm trying to sure, get at. I, I, I understand the question, and what I would say to you is, it's a hypothetical upon a hypothetical, especially when you consider that, sadly, in my view, we only have one Labour MP in Scotland, and he's already opposed the renewal of Trident. So I, I'm not sure that really adds anything to this debate. Sure, but Other presumably your expectations go beyond having one Labour MP in the future. So tell me how it would work. Listen, my expectations go far beyond having one Scottish Labour MP, but they also have high expectations of a platform of exciting policy across a whole range of issues in the Scottish but, Parliament. But sorry, I'm really going to have to push on this, Kezia. Would they take their instructions from the Scottish Labour Party or the UK Labour Party? I don't know how many different ways you want me to answer this, Rona. It's very simple. If it's whatever vote takes place on the Sunday of our conference, that will represent the position of the Scottish Labour Party conference. So a Scottish Labour MP then would follow what the Scottish Labour Party said? It is a position of the Scottish Labour Party conference. I, I don't really understand what you're looking well, for that is here well, any if, different from if, what I'm if saying. If Scottish Labour MPs take their instructions from the Scottish Labour Party and English MPs take their instructions from Commons Whip, isn't that a recipe for chaos and, and potentially disunity? OK, I, I think it's maybe a, um, a bit difficult to look at the issue of party autonomy when you're considering Trident, especially when you look at about the fact we're talking about Ian Murray here. Let me give you an, another example. It's quite possible that in the future, under my plans for a more autonomous Scottish Labour Party, that we will have a different position on issues in Scotland than they would do elsewhere in the UK party. Now, that's not an uh, uncommon concept. This happens in federal parties across Europe. And the way to manage that conflict or that disagreement is through a process outlined within the party structures and if you look at the statement that I released with Jeremy Corbyn earlier this week we are committed to creating up a process of determining okay. just how we will handle but the rare occasions where that might happen. But could that not None make things very difficult? Could no. that not make things very difficult for a future Labour government which might de be dependent on a majority of Scottish Labour MPs? Rona, this is an incredibly hypothetical conversation. I, I yeah, wish we were spending the time talking to know. about you health talk and about education. More autonomy and more power sure, for the Scottish yeah. Party. People want to know what that means in practice. Absolutely, I do understand that, but I also think they want to know about what the Scottish Labour Party is going to do to address the fact that 6,000 kids are leaving our primary schools unable to read, or the number of people that are sitting in our A&E departments waiting more than four hours to be seen. But let me answer your question very directly. There will be a mechanism to resolve any potential rare occasion where the policies of the Scottish Labour Party and that of the rest of the UK party might differ, just as happens all the time in European countries across okay. Europe. 